Hello, hello. Good evening. Hello, Lisa. Hello, Perry. Hello, Catherine. Hello, Katie. Hello, Janet. How are you all doing today? Hello, let's see. I'm Dennis. Good evening, Linda and Julie. Hello, Colleen. Hello, Stacy. Hello, Corinne. Hello, Valerie. <laughs> Hi, Sharon. You're from uh, NC, so North Carolina, I think. Hello, Pissy. Hello, Foon. Oh, Hello, Madrian. Hello, Jason, Matt, and Pat. Welcome, welcome. So, uh, if you if you can hear my voice, can you please give me a thumbs up? Yeah. Can you hear anything? Yes. If if good enough, though, if if you want to be uh made to be louder, please let me know. All right. Yeah, I have to preserve my energy for now because later on I will take you to the market and it will be crazy. Yeah, I love being to see you over there. So, okay, so I, I will keep my voice like this. Now I'm speaking very softly right now. I don't raise my voice. I speak very quietly actually. But uh, I mean in a couple of minutes. If you want me to be louder, I can be louder as well. So let me see if spring is here already. No, I said, oh, thank you, Indra. Thank you for the lucky tip. I really appreciate it. Yeah, so right now it's around 8 p.m. in Vietnam. And uh, very busy there. Yeah. Busy, it's not even <laughs> the word to describe it. Very. It is insane. Insane. I know that the Vietnamese we love our lantern. We love our festival, right? But I think that it's because of COVID. So the COVID it just you know it's gone recently. And now people they have a desire to go out and to party, you know. So uh, yeah, it's, it's actually it's not mandatory to wear a mask anymore. So uh, I just wear the mask because I was shy, you know, shy, very shy, walking through the crowd and speaking. <laughs> Let me show you. Yeah, so it seems like you all can hear my voice. You all can hear my voice. I don't have to speak louder. But keep in mind that if you want me to be louder, let me know. Um, well, spring is here as well. If, if there's some problem with uh, with my sound or with the with the stream, yeah, we will try to fix them. It's a nice flower you have, Carrie. Hello, Joanne. Hello, Jonathan. Yeah, how do I describe this place? It's like a mid-autumn madness in this country. So Kathy is actually having a, a tour in Singapore right now. But <laughs> I'm suddenly sure that it will be, you know, uh, quieter than this place. This is literally, it's like 10 million people in Hanoi. They come here, you know. <laughs> So yeah, it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be fun. There are a lot of things to see, and uh, I mean, if, if you love people watching, <laughs> this is the tour for you. You see, uh, Vietnamese family, a lot of family come here in their outfit. Yeah, a lot of Vietnamese in their party, nice outfit. They come here for the photos, uh, for shopping. So this is not a mid-autumn yet, this is like a great event and uh, normally we go shopping. So if, if there's a lot of shopping this time and in around 10 days, the mid-autumn festival 
it will happen in the 10th of September. So in the 10th of September, we're going to celebrate the, uh, the festival. There will be even more lantern, more colorful. But uh, today, it is the preparation. And for the preparation, we go for shopping. It's also pretty fun. So there are a lot of street food and people taking photos. But the main idea is that uh, family does a lot of shopping. They're spending a lot of money for the festival, you know. So yeah, it's time to start a tour, actually. I don't know. I think something with the app. I don't know how many of you are joining me right now. But welcome, everyone. Uh, if you are new to, to me, if you are new to this tour, then this is uh, Hugh in Spring. My name is Hugh, H-I-E-U. And, I, and yeah, normally we do tour, you know, in Vietnam. So today is a very festive, very joyful, very fun tour, I would say. I will walk you through the, uh, the land and market, all right? So we can see, we will see some lights and uh, a lot of colorful things, a lot of toys. Uh, but uh, you can ask me all kind of questions that you have about Vietnam and I will try my best to answer everything, all right? So without further ado, let's get started. All right, welcome once again. Hello, Don, hello, Elwa. Yeah. Hello, hello, hello. And let's start. Joining the crowd of <laughs> Hanoian, you know, of Northerners. And see how people celebrate their festival today. So, yeah. Um, yeah, <laughs> let's do it. You know, when, when I do this kind of market tour, I always get a little nervous because it's too crowded and it's kind of sucking my energy a little bit so uh that's why if there's some like when i speak something if there's some confusion please bear with me all right so uh i'm planning to tell you uh four different stories three to four different stories today a uh, story about the, the mid-autumn festival and um i will tell you a few uh practices and uh, a few habits that, uh, that we have in this country and how we think, how we celebrate this festival as well. But uh, my friends, I want to check in with you one more time. When I speak like this, can you, can you hear me very well? Please give me a final thumbs up. Okay, so far so good. So far so good, thank you, thank you, thank you. And uh, yeah, let me keep it this way, you know, I don't have to be louder. So I can save more energy, I think. <laughs> so you can see some duck over there, right? It's a balloon uh, for uh, for the children. So the Mid-Autumn Festival it could be traced back to four or five thousand years ago. Uh, we don't know the exact date for sure. But the idea is that uh, during the festival, it's only for the farmers in the past. So the farmer, they will harvest all their crops work the end of, of the season which is autumn and, um, and yeah after they have us all the crops you know all the rice and fruits they will celebrate they will celebrate with their family so originally it used to be uh, very agriculture uh, oriented so the, all the farmers gathering together with their family they're gonna cook uh, a big feast and people will enjoy it together but these days, the Mid-Autumn Festival, it has turned into something very different for different country. Uh, it is celebrated mostly in East Asian country, country, you know, such as China, Japan, Korea, Taiwan, uh, Singapore, uh, Malaysia, Philippines. So there are many different countries and each one of us have our own kind of interpretation our own kind of uh, priority when it comes to the festival. So the one that you see, the, you see the monkey over there, and the monkey that the children is taking photo with. Uh, his name is Wu Kong, Wu Kong or Ton Ngo Kong, and he is a monkey king actually. So the monkey king is like a very talented uh, character. 
from the book and the TV show called The Journey to the East. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, The Journey to the West. And, uh, and yes, yeah, so now we were booking, putting on the, the custom for, you know, mainly for the kids to, to take a photo with it. And uh, let's come and take, take a closer look at this place over here. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> How come this is even crazier than the Lunar New Year, you know? I thought they, the Lunar New Year is very intense already. But this festival is just on the whole new level though. Yeah. So all of this, all of this is for, uh, for us to put it on our head, you know, and uh, we will turn into a rabbit instead. So I, will, I think I will explain more about the rabbit if I remember it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, this is the rabbit, right? So we put these lights on our head and we will turn into the rabbit. And here you can see different kind of toys for the children. Oh, let me see. Let me show you the traffic policeman. Traffic policeman stuck in the traffic as well. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it, it's, it's kind of crazy that the scooter can come inside, you know? So, <laughs> so I want to come here to show you this one. This one is the lung. So lung is a, a unicorn actually, but of course, it doesn't look like a unicorn, right? It looks like a, a tiger or a lion in fact. And the idea is during the mid-autumn festival, the uh, artists, you know, the artists, they're gonna perform a dance with this kind of custom. So it's actually pretty heavy. It's pretty heavy and it's come in as you see on the red and yellow color. So I would say, <laughs> this might not be the tool where you can take all kind of pretty postcards, actually. Because there are too many people, you know. But uh, anyhow, I will try my best to share all the stories about this custom. Oh, hang on. You can grab some of your postcards right here. <laughs> so, the, uh, the artist is going to perform a dance. And they're going to put on this, this custom. The custom of, uh, of the unicorn, of a lion. Lion dance, we call it. And there are two things. There's about to two kind of dances. One is a lion, and another one is a dragon. So dragon dance and lion dance. And one of the stories that, well, a long time ago, you know, according to the, this is Taoism, actually. We have a touch of Taoism. And in Taoism, the way we see it is that uh, the dragon king, the dragon king would actually, uh, he got sick, you know, he got a, a pen in his waist. So he, uh, he had a pen in his waist and it's got wounded, it's bleeding. So it's got so bad and there was no doctor around. You know, there, there are no doctor on, uh, in heaven. But uh, he hesitated, he hes hesitated to come down to earth to cure his disease because he's a big dragon, right? And he's afraid that all the humans will be uh, nervous and run away when they see him. So what happened is, he actually disguised himself as a man, you know, as a normal man. <laughs> and, and he would uh, descend it to, to earth. So when he descended to earth, he met a doctor. And the doctor met him, you know, and, and they talked. And after a while, the doctor actually told him, uh, told uh, the dragon king that, uh, you know, um, I found out that you are actually not human. So I can't really cure you with this form. And <laughs> this is a kind of uh, a fun moment. So uh, the, the dragon, as a human being, right? He was a little bit shocked that the doctor found out as well. But uh, he said, okay, I'm gonna turn back into, uh, you know, into a big dragon, but don't be afraid, all right? And yeah, so that's what the dragon did. He turned himself back into a human being. And, uh, you know, the, the doctor actually, he wasn't afraid or anything. 
he killed. You know, he fired the kill to uh, to the dragon. He would seal his wound. He opened. Uh, he have a. They have like a small uh, operation, you know. So after that, the dragon felt so grateful for uh, for the doctor and for the human that the dragon told the doctor every year during this time, during the full moon, if you guys put on a, a dragon, a dragon custom and perform a dance, then all your disease will be washed away. And you will bless with a year of, uh, you know, of luck and prosperity, something like that. So yeah, that's the legend of the dragon dance. And therefore, any kind of special occasion like this one, the big one, like the Mid-Autumn Festival, and also the Lunar New Year as well, you see that people, they put on their lantern, right? They would put on their lantern and they would have like the big dragon customs, like the one that you saw, and people started to dance. But uh, sometimes it could be like a mini version would work too, like the one that you see over there. So those are like mini dragon and, and lion, you know. And the idea is that we dance, right? And on the heaven, the dragon king will listen and they will bless us. They will bless us or our disease will go away. So that's the idea. Oh, yo, yo. I'm got stuck in the traffic right now, so let me try to move away a little bit. Take a look at this mini lantern. So you see, it's just like the size of my hand, even smaller than that. But it's have like different, um, different uh, animal on it, you know. But mainly you will see the fish. Well, the fish right here. So it's like fish. Um, it's also in other stories that with this kind of fish lantern that uh, you see a lot it's a carp fish you know carp c-a-r-p right and um the carp fish if you join our uh, other tour you may heard a story that the carp it actually turned into a dragon right but in another version the carp fish actually turned into a demon you know so i i don't know he, he does something wrong but um, he does something wrong and then he turned himself into an evil and people started to make all kind of fish lantern to scare away the big pop, the big demon. So that's just a small story in this uh, during uh, related to the Mid-Autumn Festival. Yeah, and of course here you can see all kind of toys, all kind of toys, everything is so colorful, no? colorful and it is a very joyful activity in general even though i would say today the party first and we got 10 more days until the festival 10 more days and you can already see that people started to celebrate already you know kind of some people kind of go shopping and celebrate at the same time yeah, all kind of color many red you know red it's a man idea. But another thing to keep in mind is this festival is also uh, for the teenager and for the a little older kids. It also functions as a Halloween as well. So what, what do I mean by that? Well, what I mean is uh, people will actually uh, put on all kinds of masks. And some of them look a little bit creepy, you know, to celebrate the, uh, the festival. So, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is... <laughs> Let me turn my camera around to see how many people. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was fun, you know. It was fun, but... Uh, but, yeah. It could be very overwhelming, actually, especially <laughs> if you are a little introverted. Um, so yeah, this is what the uh, the lantern looks like, you know. So it's very uh, it's very colorful like this, come in different color, and it's funny though. Know, there are two type of lantern like with this fish. You can have the candle to light them up, or it's run by electricity like this, right? But uh, in Vietnam, when, when I was young, 
like uh, you know in in the neighborhood we was very poor at that time so uh, it's a common thing right so uh, most of the kids cannot afford the uh, the electric one and what we do is we would actually use a condensed milk you know we use a can of condensed milk we put a candle in it and then we light them up as a toy so for us for the millennial you know i'm 27 right now so for this this kind of generation this is actually a kind of lantern that we use during the mid awesome festival instead of this these are like it's make you know our uh, plastic and the kind of you know during that time is more expensive for the kids but now i think everybody can you know everybody everybody can buy it so yeah here we got like uh, elephant and we got a ship a boat but uh the most common one i would say is this one this one is like a red star right it's a star like a symbol of vietnam almost it's like you see them in our national flag and uh, normally it's in a yellow color and uh and here yeah it could be bigger like this as well it's an art that you see a person right there but he actually ho chi minh our leader so sometimes you see him on the on the lantern as well so let's uh let's continue this way so my friend i hope you have a good time so far with me yeah, i hope so far so good right now we uh you know we continue walking through the market and actually we will take a little detour all right so we will take a u-turn just a little bit because it's very nice on the other side as well and uh, and yeah we i will just walk straight through the market <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. it was fun so let me just scroll through the chat a little bit okay i want a panic attack oh yes can do the crap oh yeah this is the sea of uh, hanoi and you know most of them come from hanoi i think i hear mostly northern accent so yes yeah we make our own toys before mostly so the idea is uh like you have learned is for um you know it's for the farmers celebrate their, their harvest but now in vietnam it turned into a very joyful uh, joyful uh, festival mainly for the children so in vietnamese uh you could call it this is the lantern festival or the children festival as well it has almost the same meaning <laughs> so yeah how much i i got stuck here for i don't know how long but let me get try to get through this and uh and yeah if i get through this i will come back to my story all right Boy. <laughs> i hope all the colorful mentioned that yes so uh you know we, we come here a long time for us to shop so actually we we do a lot of bargaining which is very common here we do a lot of bargaining for the good products and we use it for the next 10 days so this is it's like a fusion between thanksgiving and halloween i would say so people family also spending time together after this eating a lot of mooncake and um and yeah and uh people also wear those kind of creepy masks at night as well to, uh, you know just for the fun of it <laughs> thank you anna <laughs> so now we i will tell you another story that we consider to be the origin the original story of the mid-autumn festival all right and that is the story between the moon goddess that in vietnamese we call her hằng nghe hằng nghe is her name uh, i think spring gonna spell it out for you and in order hằng nghe is a lady and her wife i'm sorry his her husband 
His name is Hậu Nghệ. So now we're gonna go into another story, alright? But uh, I will just put this photo first in case I forget. Um, yeah, let me show you some of these lanterns. Yeah, so this is one of the prettiest, I think. One of the prettiest lanterns in uh, in this market. So yeah, it's coming mainly the red color, right? red color like this. But uh, <laughs> this is also one of the uh, <laughs> the most crowded area because you see that people kind of light up for their photos. So I guess this is an uh, Instagramable uh, spot, you know, for uh, mainly for young stuff. I would say. So yeah, it's, it's uh, tech, so red, right? Red it for love. But uh, it also symbolize many different things, such as uh, power and prosperity as well. Yeah. Walking through it, I feel like <laughs> I'm kind of craving for uh, a can of Coca Cola, you know. <laughs> yeah, that would be refreshing and it's kind of, kind of calming down a little bit. But uh, yeah, that would be too troublesome. Normally, I get Coca Cola in the circle plane, very convenient that way. So, this is kind of like a, a, a main street. Well, this, is, this is like the old, old quarter of Hanoi, right? And uh, it's a very tiny street like this. But uh, this street that we're exploring today is Hang Ma, and it's known for their, you know, for their different lanterns. So take a look. Uh, right now we're gonna take a, a short detour. We're gonna take a, you know, like a U-turn, and we will continue exploring this market. And that will be the best way to go. But uh, and he's moving a little faster. But, uh, once again, welcome to the tour, everyone. Oh, this is, you know, this is madness. This is a uh, mid autumn madness. And, uh, and yeah, so now we're gonna continue our journey. I will tell you many different stories as well. If you have any question, a lot of you are new. So if you have any question about the mid autumn festival, please let me know, alright? Uh, I have some music as well. Can you hear the music? So this is the scene. So it's like everybody parking their scooter, you know. Everybody parking their bike somewhere on some street and alleyways, and they will bring their children and and their family come here. Well, the uh, Mid Autumn Festival it also function as a Kind of like a small Valentine Day as well. So you see also a lot of couples. A lot of couples come here to shop, to have some fun. But then we are in Hanoi right now, and normally uh, it's a very crowded city always. But these days in the evening, it's like everybody, like 10 million people in the city, they come here, you know. They come in this one specific neighborhood to to have fun. So that's why we have this kind of crowd in the capital. Crazy, right? So the police uh, took this here as well. I don't know what for, but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, they are here. Yeah, a lot of rabbits. So let's go into a story, right? This is the original story. Yeah, we uh, a lot of uh, people believe that the Mid Autumn Festival is was created out of this legend, and the legend is that uh, you know, long, long times ago, the Earth, the Earth that we are living right now, it got so hot, it got uh, crunches. Is got burned by 10 different suns. So there are 10 different suns on the earth. And it looks something like this, right? So, uh, you know, people, people are dying, people are suffering because of the 10 suns. 
they couldn't contain the heat of the burning, you know, of the burning sun. But then our hero, the hero of the story, Hau Nghe, right? So Hau Nghe, he is a very talented uh, actor. He would use his bow and arrow, and he was, he actually shot down all the other nine sun, leaving only one of them, right? So from ten sun, we got only one sun left, and that's the legend. So now all the gods in heaven, I don't know why they don't interfere with it in the beginning, but after they saw that the earth only have one sun left, and all the human beings start to feel happy again, the goddess of mercy, Kuang Yin, she will, you know, she will ascend it from heaven, she would descend it to the earth. He met the hero, he met the boy who shot the, the nice son, and she would actually gift it him an elixir. And that's border the, the box of the elixir could, you know, could cure all the disease and it could make the man become immortal as well. So that's it. Uh, that's the idea, right? If the man, if the hero drank, drink the elixir, he will become immortal and he will become like super strong and don't have any kind of diseases. But the problem is, the husband, uh, I'm sorry, the boy, he fall in love with, the boy fall, fall in love with uh, a girl, right? And, <laughs> and her name is Hang Nghe, right? So Hang Nghe are very beautiful, a very kind women. So the boy, according to the Chinese legend, I will tell you two different legends, all right? The boy doesn't really want to become immortal because the boy wants to live with his girlfriend and, and soon to be his wife. They want to live together and they want to die together. Very romantic. Like that. So the boy decided to give a elixir to his wife and he told his wife that you know we I'm, I'm not gonna drink it i don't want to become immortal alone so please keep it you know you, you keep it somewhere and maybe we give it to someone else when we got older but uh so uh, the story goes that the hero actually got a student an apprentice and the apprentice is very greedy, right? So the student is very greedy, and he waited for he waited for Hao Nghe, for the hero to went away walking. He actually sneaked into his house, trying to steal the elixir of immortality. Now the wife, the wife Hao Nghe, she found out, and of course she didn't want it to happen. So you know what she did? She decided to drink the whole bottle of elixir, okay? So when the wife drink the whole bottle of elixir, she become immortal. But immortal here doesn't mean that, you know, she just stay there and live forever. But according to the goddess of mercy, according to Guang Yi, immortality is equivalent to the idea that she will also become the god, the goddess, and she needs to be ascend it to the sky to live there but in this story the lady she doesn't ascend it to the sky she ascend it to the moon instead and she become the moon goddess and she lived there forever on the moon so the you know the, the husband he came back home the husband he came back home and he got very upset he got very depressed because because his wife is gone. So every year, during the eighth month of the Lunar New Year, the eighth month of the Lunar New Year is very special because that's the time, you know, that's the time where the moon is got to the brightest, brightest, and biggest. The husband will actually cook. He would cook a big feast and he would make a lot of cake that have a moon shape. So the cake that have a moon shape and it looks something like this yeah so he offering it he ring all the food and all the lantern 
and all the uh, you know all the cake right in front of his house. He offering it to the moon goddess in the hope that he can meet his wife. And therefore, you know, during the full moon, which is the 15th of the uh, of August in the lunar new year, they met each other, and that's the legend. And all the you know all the people begin to celebrate, begin to do the same thing, in the hope that. They can also witness the moon goddess as well. So that is a story, and I know that most of us are adults right now, right? and uh, it's just a, maybe like a, a legend, something that's not true. It's for all the kids, you know, like including myself, I strongly believe that. So, what happened is as a kid, our parents told us that story, right? And they told us that during the full moon. If we look up on the sky, if we look close enough, we can actually saw we can actually witness a lady, the moon goddess, along with her rabbit on the moon. So you know everybody kind of staring at the moon during the <laughs> during the fifteen. But uh, <laughs> yeah, this is the story, folks. This is the legend. Oh, look at the rabbits over here. Oh, the fish. All kind of chicken toys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you see, there's a tons of children. There's more children in this uh, in this market. Look for the man in the moon to see his face. Oh, really? Done in England. Wow. Oh, that's new for me. Yeah. <laughs> Move slowly in the crowd. So that's the, the story. Uh, the I tell you is uh, the story of uh, Chinese. You know, it's a Chinese legend. The wife, right? She drank, she drank the whole bottle of elixir, and therefore she become immortal. She become immortal, and she live on the moon forever. That's the story. And uh, take a look at this lantern. What well, traditionally, those are like special, right? It's a paper and silk lantern. But uh, those kind of lantern is very expensive, you know. Uh, it's actually very pricey. So normally for the children, we got a plastic or maybe a one with a condensed milk inside. But these lantern, I would say, if a family got a budget, they're gonna buy a whole string. So a whole string is like one, two, three of them, right? Three or even more. And they would actually, they hang it, right? They hang it around, um, I'm sorry. They, they, they would hang it in front of the house. And the idea is that uh, in the past, the lantern is supposed to chase away all the bad spirits, you know, all the ghosts, all the haunted spirits in the house. If we light up the lantern, then they got scared and they will run away. So that's the idea of those soup. And now mainly red and colorful lantern. Yeah, so sometimes there's a mini version for us to buy as well. All right. So uh, <laughs> I want some water, and I want to get through this traffic a little bit. You know. Let's see. Let's see how it goes. Let's see what what I can do. There's yeah, not much I can do. Beer hall, yeah. A lot of beer here. Oh, Carolyn, you're here. Yes, welcome, Carolyn. I probably missed some some of you today. I think uh, because uh, you know I have to focus on everything right now. Uh, people kind of pushing me and everything. But uh, but yeah, hello. If I see you, I'm very happy to see you. All right. <laughs> Um, um, what should I do next? Oh.
let me tell you a, a Vietnamese version of the Lantern Festival, right? But this is some of the street food that we have here. So you can see that it's like different kind of ice cream, different kind of candy. And this is what Hanoi is famous for, actually. So here you can see, well, we got a lot of fruit, and it's like a semen. You know, the semen and kiwi and plum, and date, and banana, of course. And then we can eat them with, uh, with sugar on them. We put a lot of sugar on them and then we dry them. So when we dry them, they will become like a snack for us. And the children, they love them. So that's the idea of this candy. So uh, there are specific streets that are very famous for this kind of candy. Some of them are actually very hard to eat. Uh, some of them are a bit salty, you know, salty and spicy. Uh, as you can see, the one on the on the corner on the left right here. Um, hello, everyone. Can you still see? Uh, can you see the screen or hear my voice? Yeah, I don't know, the, the signal is dropped down a little bit. But um, maybe because of the crowd, you know. So let me... Well, I cannot get through the crowd, so... Maybe let me try to just move a little bit. Move a little bit away from, uh, from the candy area. And maybe it's gonna be better. Still here in Sui Far, right? Uh, thank you, thank you. Yeah, now, now it's starting to get better a little bit, and I'm happy for it. <laughs> oh, yeah, my phone is getting a little hot, I think. So, let me just come here and. and uh, I need to take a break. I'm sorry, um, you know, let, let me get some water, I need to drink some water and I will come back to you, alright? So, just, uh, yeah, so please enjoy the scooter, right? And uh, give me, uh, well, 20 seconds, I think. Yeah, my throat is so dry right now, as well. for your patience everyone uh, right now we will continue to explore the, the market but uh, yeah I, um, I need to adjust the, the microphone a little bit as well so please wait <laughs> explain all the people <laughs> But how, how are we doing so far? Yeah, it's very sticky, Caroline. We so far so good. We enjoy this tour. Yeah. So let's go. Let's continue our, our tour. <laughs> let's go this way. Oh, I don't know why the signal is like this. It's, it's worth great. From the very beginning until now, but uh, yeah, I hope it's get uh, really, really better soon. So the Vietnamese version is, is also it's kind of similar to the the Chinese legend, you know, with uh, also the moon goddess and uh, and then the boy, you know, he, he he's shooting down all the ten suns and, and everything. But uh, in our version, the Vietnamese version, it is a little bit more practical, I would say. Because in the Vietnamese story, actually the um, the husband, you know, the, the husband when he received an uh, elixir of immortality, 
uh, <laughs> he make a, a different choice instead instead of uh, giving it to his wife he decided to drink it you know but he doesn't drink all of it by himself he decided to divide the the bottle in half he give the wife half and he drink half so they both become immortal and they both you know ascend it to the moon and they they, <laughs> they live happy together so that's it, like the vietnamese version you know it's a little bit more <laughs> more uh well more smart i would say and more joyful that way so yeah they both become immortal and they live together oh you like that version Vinny? <laughs> it's always it's kind of a little bit funny hearing the story like because it's like there are no plot twists or anything you know it's like a 100 happy ending for both of them Yeah, <laughs> to happiness. So, um, for the Vietnamese, it's more joyful, and I don't know how they do it in China or any other country. But the Mid Autumn Festival is supposed to be very fun, you know. It's nothing serious. It's nothing like too heavily about uh, tradition or anything. It's more just a fun time, you know. It's a fun time where. Well, the farmers celebrate the harvest, and for the youngster like us, it's like a, a stress reliever almost. So uh, we like if we are very small, we, we light up some lantern, right? And, uh, and we we got a little bit older, like the, the teenager, they turn into almost like a Valentine, where a couple would hang out together, and then we're gonna eat a lot of mooncakes. So, yeah, there were a lot of goodies in the house as well. Um, in 10 more days, yeah. The autumn festival. Actually, uh, this is more like, you know, a, a, a toy, a toy section. And I want to speed up a little bit. Oh, that's, that's <laughs> Do they allow Hego tour at the Do they allow Hego tour at the Autumn Festival? Oh yes. We may do one of them. Let's see how it goes. We may show you what the the main events look like, which is imagine even crazier than this one. But we wouldn't be in Hanoi anymore. We will actually be in Saigon. So Saigon is slightly different. Saigon is more, I'll say it's a little uh, less crowded, you know. So I'm feeling like you know, to, to come here, I will come here a little bit. Uh, this is actually a parking lot and uh, I will just take a, a quick look at my at my signal, you know, and I will come back to you very, very quickly. All right. Hello, everyone. I'm back. I'm back and back. I hope you can see me and hear my voice and everything. So now we are almost coming to the end. I will walk you to walk the uh, the end of the street, and we will end the tour right there. All right. Oh no, I cannot see anything. I cannot see the chat for some reason. And this is scary, actually. Really, what to do? I don't know why it happened this way. This is 
is weird. Weird. Yep, people are leaving and I cannot see the chat. Let me call. Yeah, let me call Spring to see what happened, all right? Yeah. So, hello everyone. Uh, the problem is, I just call Spring and it seems like. Oh, I can see you now. Okay. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I can see you now. Thank God. Yeah, I'm gonna see the chat for a moment. So, I thought you cannot see me. But anyhow, let, let, let's continue, right? <laughs> let's continue our tour. Um. So we got the all the toys here. All well, the toy is supposed to, you know, it's something very basic. It used to be just lunch and wrestling. But now you see all kinds of things actually. So we got you know by the man and the hook, all kind of like Hollywood character. You know, it's come everywhere. And uh, the kids they love that way, right? so I guess. That's why almost many many different shops they display these uh, these toy section for uh, for the children. One of the thing is uh, mainly like beside the lantern, another kind of toy and another kind of shape that you will see during this uh, festival is the rabbit. So, uh, rabbit, I'm not sure if you, I have uh, a photos of the rabbit here, but the rabbit, the bunny, it is actually associated with, uh, with the moon goddess as well. And the story is that, um, you know, one time the, the king of heaven, the, the Jai Emperor, he went to test all the animals yeah, all the animals on the planet, right? And he was sending three immortals. The three immortals uh, coming down to Earth. They disguise themselves as a very uh, weak and poor men. Yeah, so they disguise themselves as a very weak and poor man, and therefore all the all the animals when they see that they don't really care you know some of them try to find food for the men but you know some of them was high but then when it turned to the rabbit when it turned to the bunny this one the bunny is so weak and so small but uh, she still wants to help she wants to help the, the poor man and what she did is she would tell all the three poor men that uh, you know I can find the food for you because I'm so weak and fragile and I'm actually, uh, you know, I, I eat all the crush and everything so you cannot eat that. But what you can do instead is, well, you can eat my meat and it will satisfy your, your hunger like that. 
So imagine it's a story. There, there are three very hungry men, right, needing help. So <laughs> the uh, oh yeah, a lot of fish. Um, so the three immortal, three immortal, they are like the god. They are felt, they felt so touched by by the rabbit. They felt so grateful that you know they decided to keep the rabbit as kind of as their pet. They decided to bring the habit to heaven as well. But eventually, the habit uh, chose to uh, to return to the moon and become the consort, become the assistant of the moon goddess. So that's why normally you see uh, for the toy, they tend to be, you know, uh, they have the kind of bunny hat these days. It's just like the ears of, of the bunny that uh, they love to put it on their head. And you will also see uh, many kind of small rabbits and tiny, tiny toy that have the rabbit shape. And because in the legend, yeah. you know, even in the zodiac animal, the rabbit is always a very sweet animal, you know, very kind, very sweet. And they always trying to help, trying to help and support, even though they are very small, you know, compared to the other animals. So that is another story. <laughs> yeah, so take a look. Some shop, you know, they have everything like toys and lantern and mask and drum as well. So there is another story with the drum. Let's see if I, I can cover it for you today as well. So I love the mini lantern, you know. And this is me, actually, the pig. You know, Spring and I, we are pig. So normally, each one of us, we will have a different animal, right? And, uh, and we love to buy our own kind of animal, according to the Zodiac. So we was born in 1995, that would be this one, the pig. Uh, but this day, well, Got a butterfly here as well. It's not included in the zodiac anymore, but I guess it's so pretty, so they decided to make it as well, you know. And this is very a very popular character that all the Vietnamese love. And this is what we call Doraemon. Oh, I love orange, but Doraemon is supposed to be blue actually. So Doraemon is actually a cat, right? A magic cat that uh, he actually have a um, she actually have like a a wallet i'm sorry a pocket and it's an endless pocket and it carry a lot of magic so yeah that's it Dorimon. all right let me move on to the next section <laughs> so in Vietnam, we walk on the right, you know. We walk on the right, but uh, if you're not careful, let's say, if you don't notice, and if you walk like on the opposite, then <laughs> it will be a big struggle for you to get through all of this. So remember, this is the right, and if you want to, you know, we walk on the right, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> So we got a dog here as well. The dog would be yeah, someone in 1994. So many different ones. We actually we met a, a friend in Hanoi. Uh, maybe some of you know him, but uh, he was on Hego for a while. His name is Jui or Huang, right? Le Huang or Jui, and we met him this morning actually. So. And, uh, and we have a chat, right, in uh, in a coffee shop. <laughs> and then we ask him that, so you guys, for, for the local people, for Hanoian, what do you guys do on, uh, you know, on the national holiday? And, uh, to our surprise, the answer is that most of us, uh, mo most of them, people in the capital, they decided to stay home, you know, to mostly to stay home or maybe travel outside of the city. But on the other hand, festival like this one like the mid-autumn festival people actually decided to hang out on the street 
So yeah, it's very, very different. Mid Autumn Festival. Oh, we even have Iron Man here as well. Huh? Iron Man and, uh, and the sun. But those are nice. Those are paper lantern, which is very cheap. So, you know, I think everybody could afford this one. And uh, the Vietnamese, right, we got inspired a lot by the uh, Eastern, our uh, Eastern Asian country. So that's why you see something like this. This is Pikachu. Pikachu is a character as well in uh, Japanese uh, anime. It's a cartoon and a comic book. And yeah, mostly it's the sun because the idea, remember the story. The boy with the bow and arrow, he actually shot down nine suns. But then of course, you know, you got Mickey Mouse and all the Hollywood influences as well. So everything is pretty and inside, inside uh, the paper, right? We got a, a candle and we can light them up. But we have to be very careful with these paper because if we are not careful, you know, they could burn. The whole lantern could burn. So. Somebody blow this balloon. <laughs> All right, my friend, we are coming to towards the end of the tour for now. Yeah, I'm just you know a few meters, a few feet away from the main street, and I will end the tour right there. All right. Uh, thank you for joining. Thank you for joining. Thank you for coming to the tour. You know, I really appreciate your your time and, and attention. Thank you for coming and, and have fun with me today. So yeah, uh, like usual, I wish you all got blessed in whatever you do, all right? I wish you got blessed in whatever you do. I wish you got all the, the peace, the prosperity, and the luck in your life, right? May whatever you do, it's always flow smoothly, smoothly for you. And uh, yeah, please enjoy your day, you know. Enjoy your day today. It is uh, a Tuesday, I think, a Tuesday evening for most of you. So tomorrow morning, which is evening time for uh, for you, we will have a tour, you know, another relaxing tour in Hanoi. And uh, we will show you a lot of cats, <laughs> a lot of cats and felon in the cat cafe, all right? And that will be also our goodbye to Hanoi. We will actually travel pretty soon after that. We will travel to Ha Long Bay. I will meet my dad and my Northern family. And I will do one more tour in Ha Long Bay for this trip. So yes, thank you for joining everyone. Thank you for coming and have fun. Um, yeah, I had to show you my face, right? Uh, so thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, yes, thank you. <laughs> it's, it's a little bit overwhelming for me, I have to admit. Um, so yeah, now we, we, we uh, we're gonna do two more minutes walk in uh, in silence, right? Not really silence, but two more minutes walk and I will end the tour very quickly. So. <laughs> what a tour! <laughs> Oi, Hanoi, Hanoi, Hanoi. Nowhere else feel more like Vietnam than Hanoi, you know, this is the quintessence of Vietnam. Ah, look at the streets, <laughs> the crowd, the music, the colors and everything. <laughs> yeah, thank you for coming here. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> thank you for traveling to Vietnam with us all this time.
All right, bye bye, my friend, uh, and uh, we will see you soon.